Hello everyone, welcome to Sermon Prep and this week we're looking forward to the 33rd Sunday in Ordinary Time Year B. We only have one more Sunday to go before the end of the liturgical year. We've got Christ the King next Sunday. So we're towards the end of the year and as a result much of uh, our liturgy speaks to us about the end times. Um, that's given a fancy name, a Greek name, eschatological, um, which means the end times. And associated with that, we have a lot of apocalyptic writing. And that always creates a sense of unease or um, uh, a little bit of worry amongst people when they read apocalyptic literature. And the reason for that is that so often we don't understand apocalyptic literature. It uses all these dramatic images like the stars falling from the sky and those sorts of things and the moon turning to blood and um, those are dramatic images used to convey a truth. Um, perhaps that literature is not um, it's not very common in our time. Um, we like more accurate, precise um, ways of speaking. And so we're unfamiliar with apocalyptic literature. And so we then sort of think, this is true, this is how the end times are going to be. No, they, they are meant to be dramatic, yes, but they're conveying a truth. Um, and apocalyptic literature is used very often in times of upset, turmoil and persecution. And we will see that from our readings for this Sunday. The book of Daniel, of course, we know what's happening there. Huh? there uh, there's the exile, uh, the Syrian occupation, Antiochus the fourth, the king of Syria at the time, was really not a pleasant chap at all. Um, he was very, very uh, harsh and dictatorial and had really um, unsavory, unpleasant ways of dealing with people. And so the people of um, Israel were suffering. And so the apocalyptic literature that Daniel uses comes from that sort of experience and we see snippets of apocalyptic literature in all the gospels too and we'll see it in our gospel according to saint mark for this sunday so let's have a look at the readings the first reading is as i said from daniel daniel chapter 12 verses 1 to 3 and then the psalm is psalm 16 and the little response that we make, preserve me, O God, for I take refuge in you, is really the response we have in times of trial and persecution and hardship. Um, and that's what the apocalyptic writers would have hoped for in these dramatic times when there's all sorts of turmoil and using these dramatic images that we are too take refuge in the Lord. And so at this time, with all the craziness in our own lives and our own world and our own countries, yeah, the only place where we find rest is in the Lord. So let's take refuge in the Lord. And then the second reading is taken from the, the letter to the Hebrews, chapter 10, verses 11 to 14, and then verse 18 and the gospel is mark chapter 13 verses 24 to 32 mark is speaking about looking at the signs of the times looking at the winds and the uh, vegetation 
and being able to assess from them those signs what's happening in the world um, and to be able to to prepare ourselves um, and I think that's really the sort of idea that Mark wants to get across we need to be prepared the disciples needed to be prepared for what was going to happen to Jesus what was going to happen when he was um, no longer with them and so Mark is trying to get the disciples to say look at the things around you appreciate them uh, join the dots if you like and so be prepared for what's going to happen and I suppose um, at this time in the church we need to look at the signs of the times what's happening in our world what's happening in our church how do we as people of faith respond to that you know I again I was in two different meetings this week one in-person meeting with some clergy in our archdiocese and a, he's not a young man but he's a, a new priest relatively new priest he said something which boggles my mind a little bit he said you know i'm not too uh i'm not a great fan of the present pope i prefer the previous pope well i i don't ever think it being pope is determined on a popularity contest it's the holy spirit um, but you should wonder why does a youngish priest reflect like that think like that speak like that and perhaps it's you know a hankering for the old ways a more conservative traditional approach you know, the church is always on the move. It is a pilgrim church. We cannot go backwards. And Vatican II asks us to look at the signs of the times. Look at what's happening around us and to respond. That's what we're called to do. It's no good saying, oh, well, I don't like what's going on. <gasps> Close my eyes, bury my head in the sand like an ostrich or go back. No, we're called always into the situations that we find ourselves so that was the one meeting. And then the second was uh, an online meeting, a divine renovation meeting with clergy from all over the world again. And I always love those because they're uplifting to see priests grappling with common problems and trying to be creative in responding. And he, this was an old priest. He'd been a priest for more than 40 years and uh, he he said how he loved being at these meetings to learn new di and different things and he said i wish i'd learned the things i'm learning here now way back then it would have solved some of my problems and and saved me from a lot of upset and heartache um, but what he was was saying is that we've got to do things differently huh the church of 40 years ago is not the church of today. We can't be wanting a pope with an attitude from that time now. Completely different reality. And we need to look at the signs of the times, just like Mark was challenging his disciples to do. Look at those and respond. We've always got to be relevant. We don't take on everything that the world throws at us of course we need to be a sign of contradiction and that does bring us a certain amount of persecution and hardship rejection ridicule just like the apostles had just like the early church had just like the people of Daniel's time had by sticking to their faith sticking there to their traditions even in the face of the turmoil of being taken into exile so it's not an abandonment of Catholic teaching, Christian um, uh, virtues, none of that. But we've got to speak into that situation. We've got to find new ways of doing that. So, so that's what Mark speaks about. And, and, and that's really what Daniel is also getting at. Um, how are we responding? in times of difficulty and upset and challenge 
Um, are we being wise? He says here, you know. And many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. And those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the firmament. Yeah, we've got to be wise so as to be seen, to be examples, to be people that attract hurting and disillusioned and uncertain people. By the way, this is the earliest account in the scriptures to the idea of the resurrection of the dead. Um, uh, this idea that the dead uh, will rise to a new life. This comes, this is the first reference to it in the Bible and one of the earliest in time theological uh, thinkings regarding the resurrection of the dead. And so that's important for this time of the year, the end of the liturgical year. It reminds us of eschatological principles and ideas. And it has some sort of apocalyptic undertones. So that comes out very clearly there in um, the extract from the book of Daniel. The letter to the Hebrews again speaks about the priesthood, the offering of sacrifices, um, and the superiority of Christ's sacrifice to the old sacrifices. Um, it is Christ who removes sin, not these other sacrifices of animals and sprinkling of animals' blood. It is the sacrifice of Christ. And you know, we are all priests. By virtue of our baptism, we are all priests and we are all meant to offer a sacrifice of praise, a sacrifice of our lives for the healing of our world. Each one of us is called to, to work to heal the world. Um, and when we consider the hurt and upset and difficulties and challenges of our world and what is made real for us in the scriptures for this week i think we are able to understand that this is a vital role of our baptismal priesthood the priesthood we share together with jesus christ um, so there's some thoughts i haven't gone into too much detail this week because i'm i'm going to uh, present on sunday at all the masses the process for our synod consultation in our parish. You know that we've had a time of prayer, four weeks of prayer. This is the fourth and final week. And then in the first week of Advent, we start our questions and listening and, and getting a sense of where we're at and where we would like to go. So in other words, what we're going to do speaks very much to our readings. Looking at the signs of the times, finding how we as a church need to move forward, not backwards, not stay where we are, move forward to respond so that others will find in us a real home, a real refuge, will find in us Christ. So that's what we're going to look at um, this week in the time for the sermon. So it's, it's, it's got undertones of these readings, um, but it will really be about the process we are hoping to take, will be taking in our parish to ensure that everyone has a voice. Okay, And those of you who gather online, I hope you'll be able to follow, but you'll find the presentation on our different social media platforms, as well as an opportunity to respond, to vo make your voice heard, everybody's voice. It's important that we hear you, that we we're open to one another. Okay, so that's what we're about this week. Something different, something new, something exciting, all under the action of the Spirit. So, I look forward to seeing you. I look forward to welcoming you in person or online. Um, till then, take care everyone. God bless and bye-bye.